Hello, everybody. I figured I'd go ahead and jump on early for a minute just to give people a chance to um, tune in and stuff for anybody that wants to tune in. We're taking a tour from my house. Oh, and looky here. We have lights. And it's quiet outside. Oh, my Lanta. So, after two days of no power, well, besides generator, but it wasn't a huge one. So, I wanted to take it easy on things. Um, kind of take it easy on the power draw and etc. like that. So, I've been burning wood like crazy. Um, gas cans like crazy. Go figure, the power just came, or came back on about an hour after I went and got three cans of gas. So, at least we got gas for other things. Um, like I said, just waiting for everybody to jump on, whoever might jump on here. Um, I'm going to see if there's a way that I can kind of, um broadcast this a little bit further um, I don't know I hope I shared it in enough places um, hi Jessica um, I was just going on that I came on early just to give everybody a few minutes and uh, make sure that I've I don't know how this candelina is going to go because I don't have the little setup that I used to have. Um, I will kind of go through my introduction. I, For anybody that's joining us new this year, all last year, all my, what did I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 batches of eggs that I sat, I did live candling. Um, and I used my cabinet incubator, um, but right now that is out of commission because I had a power surge when we turned the generator on, and go figure that I did not have it up on a surge protector yet, um, because I couldn't find one, because I, I stole it when I wasn't using it, and then, um, yeah, I found one after the fact my fault um so i've got them set up in my tabletops i don't know exactly how this is going to work out i'm using the ipad so that i can use the case as a stand and etc like that um jessica just be patient with me um i shared it in a couple of the groups that we're in and etc like that so just waiting to see if anybody else joins on um where did you see the post at, Jessica? In what group? I shared it in Backyard Geese, a couple of the Sebastable Geese, um, Sebastable Goose pages. Um, not, can't remember where else I shared it, but I tried to share it real quick. Um, and a few places. I don't know who just jumped on here. Hi, Jerry. Um, but anyways, um, I was just kind of going through an overview of everybody, um, as far as the last two days events. Um, I see three people are watching now. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Um. So, Jessica, I hope that you find some of this information informative um, and helpful to you. Jerry, I hope this helps you out a lot. Um, I'm now seeing six people, but I have no idea who's all watching here. If you're here, say hi so I know, whoever, know who everybody is. Um, so, I guess let me start off with a recap. Um... I don't know exactly how this candelina is going to go because I have them set up differently than I did last year. I had like this whole setup that I did as far as making it easy to candle my batches last year. Um, this is a really early season for Sebastopol's here in Michigan. Um, so 
the one incubator I'm not really sure what I'm gonna find hopefully everybody survived the power outage that I just went through I was out for two days just got it back on tonight um, normally I use my cabinet incubator but that's out of commission right now um, so I'm using my tabletop styrofoam incubators um, so let me go ahead and um, let me flip this around. I keep my incubators in my bedroom because I have the room darkening, um, shades, which is helpful to help things. Um, and I keep the air conditioner going because it is so stinking hot in my room because my, the hot water heater is on this room or on this wall and the furnace is on that wall. Fun. Um, so again, be patient with me here, guys, as I kind of set this up and see what is going to work to see here. Um, I'm going to, I don't want to rotate my phone. I want it this way. The iPad's telling me to rotate my phone. Um, so anyways, I'm going to try to set these guys up here like this. Um... So these are my Genesis. I know there's a flash on here somewhere. Where is it? I don't know. This is the Genesis 1588 um, incubator. I love these things because you can adjust the humidity. Um, you can calibrate it per your preference. Um, hopefully this will work as far as kind of using the iPad stand. Oh, these guys got to pull. Anyways, and I know it's going to be just, yeah, I don't know where I'm going to set that. Um, <laughs> this could get interesting, guys. Um, so anyways, um, I've got three that we're looking at right now. I know you guys can't see them because I got the light up there. Um, but I've got three in here right now. These three are due, when are they due? They are due to hatch on Thursday. Well, actually Wednesday is day 38, or 28, sorry. Um, so goose eggs usually take 28 to 30 days to hatch. Um, it's okay to have them open. This is an awful long stretch for me. Um, I'm going to give them a little mist. And these guys are just going to stay open longer since they're closer to hatching. Um, even when I use the cabinet incubator with the automatic churner, I still cooled and mist and churned once a day. So, again, these guys are really close to hatching. Um, I'm trying to see. Okay. I Like I said, I have no idea what we're going to see in these. Um, just because of the fact. Let me see if I can change the lighting on this a little bit because that is oh, awfully, awfully dark here, guys. Um, I don't think so. Oh, yes, I can. I don't know. I don't know if this will help or not, guys. I'm not very good with the iPad. I don't think that's going to help. Anybody have any suggestions? And it's stupid close too, which doesn't help. Um, so this egg here, like I said, they're due to hatch, start hatching on Wednesday. I'm going to take a look here real quick. Give it a, it's always better, I find, the candle on the side. Um... With them laying on the side, and you can see it moving in there right there. You can see the clear spot, it's going to be kind of hard to see because it is filling up so much space. But you can see where that clear spot kind of goes darker to lighter. Are you guys able to see that? Because I'm like looking around the iPad and trying to look through it. Yeah, there I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it. Right above my thumb, you can see it moving. 
you can see the veining here. I hope, I don't know. No, I don't think this one is. Um, I had a different flashlight too. I could need new batteries. Let's check the other one. Reach. And guys, if you ever seen mama roll an egg around, I mean, yeah, you have to be careful with them, but you don't have to be like really, really, really careful. Okay, so I don't think this one made it through. There we go. Um, I wish I could make it brighter on your guys' own. Can anybody see what I might be seeing here? Um, right here I see a bunch of veining. I don't know if it would help if I backed it up a little bit. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. I like my phone a lot better. But anyways, I see veining here. But I am not seeing any movement from this one. And what I see is I see where it's just kind of sitting at the bottom here. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to toss it or anything like that yet. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. Um, so what I'm seeing here, this is, this one's a really good one. If you see how that air cell is shaped, it's already dipping down. And what I mean by dipping down is, see how, see how it kind of slants this direction? Um, there. So like, the gosling should pit from this top part where it's the biggest. Um, I'm going to just look around here see if I can see any movement here so there's the edge of the gasoline right here and I know I keep going in on frame I need to grow about two inches oh okay I see let's get it focused there watch right there under the flashlight right at the base of the air cell maybe we can see a little bit better if I turn it here I don't know but if you see these light and dark spots, I I can see it moving. I can see it moving. Okay, let's move on to the next group. Um, maybe we'll see a little bit better. All right, so I've got two batches on the other side here. Um. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how many things I have in here. It's full. I have two batches. Um, one, one batch that is due next week, a week after this first batch, and then second batch that's due like the first week of January. So I'm going to go ahead and candle the the earliest batch because I haven't candled them yet and see what we've got for fertility. Um, so where am I? Okay, other side. Now. Okay, so that's a really good shot. So this egg was sat on Monday. And this little spot right here that you see is the embryo forming. Um, next week we'll be able to see it kind of bouncing around in there. This is the the yolk where the yolk kind of split off. Um, but this is about what is it Monday? Tomorrow's Monday, so this is at day six. By day six, you should really see some good veining in there to be able to tell, and you'll also be able to tell. Where your air cell is. Um, oh, I almost took the indicator. Isn't that cool? Okay, see the air cell right there by my finger? 
you'll want that to grow as they're incubating, just like the other one did, the other side. I need longer arms. Um, so this one here is the same. Uh, there we go. Is the same age. And looky there. You can see all that spider webbing. It reminds me. Dang it. It slid. Sorry. It reminds me of one of those eye candy balls that you see at, um, at Halloween. Come on, come into focus. There we go. So this one's got some really good veining. Now I sat 20 out of this batch. You can see right here, the embryo starting to, to form. That little black dot there will be the eye. So that's two. Let's see here. Oh. Three. Hi, Amy. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Lori. Hi, Caitlin. So there's three. These guys are about six days old, Amy. Just coming on. This is a heavy egg. You guys are going to find out the same time that I am here. Oh, yep. See it? Is that clear on your side, guys? Where the embryo and the veining is? I don't know if it's my eyesight, period. Because I don't have the greatest eyesight, especially at night. But hope you guys can see that. Um, we want... And the way that I label my eggs, guys, I label them through the alphabet. X and the alphabet. That way I can keep track of what batch is what. Um, okay, here's another one. Day six. You guys are finding out the same time that I'm finding out here. And Amy, this is being really difficult because I can't use my cabinet incubator. Something surged in my power with the generator and it fried something in my incubator. So there's one, two. This is number six, guys. Six days old. And I can't stretch my arm around any further. I'm kind of like hugging the iPad stretched up on top of my dresser. <laughs> that one's got really good veining. Really good. So I let these sit for about, mm, I want to say it was about a week and a half. No, a week in my basement before I brought them up to the incubator. Um, my basement is at about 40 some degrees. So, um, that keeps them cool. Let's see here. Let's see what this one is. Um, so I'm not seeing any veining in that one. And this one wouldn't make it anyways. This one probably wouldn't make it anyways, or it'd be a very, very difficult hatch. Focus in on my side. Please focus in. I'm going to try to balance this on the egg here. Okay, can you all see that? Right there, that big dot. There. That is the air cell. Um, for some reason or another, the air cell is on the side of the egg rather than at the top of the egg. So I'm just going to toss this over on my bed. I'm going to be cleaning this out as it goes. So, like I said, I haven't candled these guys yet. So, and there was 20 of them. Done. Nothing grew in here. This is the yolk. Um, yeah, nothing grew in here. Oh, that's a Sylvester egg. 
Oh boy. So when I say Sylvester Egg, um, Sylvester is my splash and he is going on, I think, like 11. Last year he didn't have great fertility. Um, so this one here looks like it could have started to. Maybe just a hair like the yolk started to split off a little bit. Because it's got a little bit of a darker spot right there, but it didn't take. Which, actually, thank God, they have stopped laying. But, it's supposed to get up near, like, hmm, high 50s, 60s, something like that. So, I would expect that they're going to do it again. Okay, so this is what I see on my side, guys. So, right in here, and right here, I see a little bit of a dark spot. And, no, it's not gunk. It's not gunk from the nest. But what I see here is I see the dark yolk there. That tells me that this one was probably fertilized. It just didn't take because what I have found is the yolk kind of splits off where it almost looks like a U um, right in the very early stages. Um, I have candled as early as four days and been able to tell. So, this is another Sylvester egg. Oh, boy. Oh, Sylvester, tell me you're not shooting blanks, buddy. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for him to shoot blanks. <laughs> I don't know. I might be done for this season. Or, well, for this round. I still got next year to go. So, another Sylvester egg. And there is quite a size difference. I've got a little, little one in here. Um, there is quite a size difference. Now, it seems like I should have be able to have a flash on this thing for lighting, but I don't when doing a live video. So I will try to do this the best I can. You know what? I will just show you at the end when I turn the lights back on. I'll show you all the different sizes. This is another Sylvester egg. He had five in there. I already, um, I threw one out because it was turning black. Yeah, homie don't play that. I'm not taking any chances with that. So, here's another dud. You can see no veining, no division, no nothing. Um, so I got one, wait, I don't know if I'm done yet, batch C, okay, another Sylvester egg, he is batting zero so far this year, well, I can't even really say this year because it's so early, I will probably be doing this again in March, <laughs> and guys that are watching, I will be doing this weekly with you, it'll give you a jump hopefully on your incubation. <laughs> another Sylvester egg nothing I'm getting quite a collection here of nothings okay so this is batch B uh, this was the second batch that I did um, they are due not this not the middle of this week but the middle of, uh, of next week um, so they're somewhere around like I don't know, what would that be, like day 21-ish? Somewhere between 15 and 21. Um, so we should get some, we should hopefully see quite a bit of cool things. Um, last year when I did it, we were seeing like feet and everything else like that. So, I think I need new batteries. Does it help if I pull it further away or not? Can you see anything in that egg? Or do you just see like a blob in the light? I see it moving right there. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. 
I think I decided last year that I liked my phone a lot better. But I lost one of my feet for my phone, and I don't know how well that would work with my setup right now. Thank you, Colleen. Okay, so we should be able to see on this one here. Um, I'm going to get it up here a little bit more by the camera. camera. There we go. Maybe we can see a little bit better there. I keep forgetting that the camera is at the top of the iPad. <laughs> so this one is moving in here. Um, so far it looks like everybody has survived the power outage and whatever fried my incubator because I'll tell you what, I opened up my incubator and holy bejeebies did it stink. It smelled just like burning wire. And I couldn't take them out because I didn't have this. Up. Wow. Can you guys see that little fella in there jumping around? Call this one Springs. And I have no idea what's white and what's colors in here. Um, I figured that I'd find out when they hatch because, well, you got colors and you got whites. So, this one is really busy in there. Um, I'm going to try and come in closer because I literally just seen a foot, guys. And sometimes when you're candling, right there, right there, there's a something, there's a body part. Um, sometimes when you're candling, you'll see body parts. Um, I see feet quite a bit. They remind me of bat wings. <laughs> so, there's that one. I'm reaching here. And, oh, I was starting to say that sometimes as you're candling, especially if you're candling big, bigger batches and cooling them, sometimes they get a little lethargic, so it's best to do it right off the bat. And don't hesitate to kind of tap on it. And, you know, it's kind of hard to see what you're candling when you do when you candle like upside down like that um i always keep them on their side when i'm candling at most i'll kind of tip them upwards a little bit now this guy's a little active guy too so um but i like to keep them on their side i don't know maybe it's a psychological thing i don't know if it matters but especially as they get bigger and take up that whole air cell, or you know, the whole egg, it gets hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Um, well, oh, you know why? I bet it's really dark on my side. Okay, who has an iPad that can help me out here to turn the brightness up? Okay. Hey, I thought that I closed it out. I can't remember how to turn the brightness up on these. I don't know if I can do it while I'm in a live video or not. Okay. I'll come back. I'll do it. I'll, I'll have it set up next time. Um... And always, always be careful when you're candling. Um, last year I had an incident where I dropped one as I was candling it. And it cracked. Um, I immediately got it sealed with wax. But in the process I seen blood kind of leaking out of the crack. And needless to say that baby didn't move. Or it didn't live. I was surprised it lived for a couple of days afterwards. But... We can see movement here. There we go. Can you all see that? Um, for those of you that are women and that have had babies, it kind of reminds me of watching the baby, you know, flip and flop and turn in your 
stomach. Mm. So this is my weird shaped egg. It's kind of got like a little bit of a flat spot. So this one's going to be hard to see. Um. I've seen it. So, well this is good. Um, so far everybody has made it through the power outage. I was really kind of worried there. Um, they might be a little bit slower because they I was without power for about three hours. Um, now this one has a really good air cell. Really good air cell. When I'm candling, I'm also looking at the air cells um, to make sure that they're growing. And I like to take a lot of time with you guys with this to give opportunity for questions and things like that. Yes, I'm candling, but I'll answer whatever questions you've got. Um, for example, GQO or, you know, any tabletop or auto churning. Um, well, hold on. Let me rephrase that. So honestly and truthfully, the churners that come with tabletops, they don't work well for geese. So you, the best thing you can do is lay them on their sides, just like I've got them and hand churn. Um, I gotta say, I've been really bad about doing my hand churning, but it's working. I don't fret as much as what I used to anymore. Like, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta churn the eggs. Oh, I forgot to churn the eggs last night. Mm, no big deal. I'll do it in the morning or whatever. Um, I mean, it's not like mom has a set schedule to stop, you know, check on the clock as far as when she's turning them around. Um, but ultimately they say, you know, a good if you're using Pete's Guide to Hatching, which is one of the best resources out there for hatching, um, it's on the Old School Sebastopol Goose Lovers Forum, and I know that it's on Backyard Chickens, too. I'm digging for the last one under the iPad. Okay. Um... So, you know, Pete's Guide states to hand turn like three times a day, cool and mist them, um, um, but everybody does everything different. Um, you know, like I was talking on the phone with Jerry the other day about it, it says, you know, what may work for you or what may work for me? I'm going to turn the light on guys real quick. So anyways, I was saying to Jerry... Um, what might work for me may not work for you. Um, you know, as far as where the location is at in your house, um, your basement, your barn, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, like that. Um, altitudes affect it. Um, I'm just making sure I get everybody on the right side that they're supposed to be, I know. But altitudes affect, uh, relative humidity affects, the ambient temperatures around the incubators affect it. There are so many, so, so many variables as to all this incubation. Especially for your first couple times, you may find that you're having to tweak things as you're going along. Um, even still, I find that I'm having to tweak things. Um... As I go along, like last year, and I was starting to say about the cabinet incubator, which has the automatic turner. Um, and I'm kind of getting sidetracked here, but anyways, the what I have learned from other people that use a cabinet incubator is to at least take and hand churn them once a day. Don't rely solely on that churner to do its job. Um, because even though it is, I don't remember what side those were on, um, even though it is churning them daily, I don't think I do. even, or even though it is churning it, you know, you can set it for, I think the least amount is every two hours to turn them automatically but anyways um 
take them out and hand turn them at least once a day. That way, um, they're getting flipped from side to side. I'm trying not to blind you guys, but that light is right seriously above my head. Um, and always um, turn them like I did, roll them like that. Uh, don't go end to end, roll them like that. Um, and the cooling and misting, there is a sheet that I did post like mm, two years ago. I will find that and bump that back up. That gives the basics, basic breakdown. It's kind of like a, a spreadsheet of how to do it per what I've learned, which was, um, from Pete's Guide to Hatching. Um, incubators, variable. Um, I mean, there's the age of the goose can even be variable. Uh, a lot of times your pullets and your cockerels have weaker fertility, especially until they figure out how to do what they're supposed to do. Um, pull eggs, there's a lot of people that don't even hatch them just because they can be so ungodly small. And let's take a, let's take a look at the size difference here in comparison. So... Let me flip around here. Okay, so these eggs, one, two, three, four, five. There. I don't want to take my phone. There. So these five eggs, which are, I mean, it, it's pulling. To lift them up and they're quite a bit heavier too are from a what is she she's sexish sexish i think um i would guess that these ones are from my and she's a big hen too she's a she's a bigger hen so that makes a difference um these two here which Oh, you know what? I have a tape measure somewhere. I could measure these for you guys. Um, which I'm not stretching as far to hold them. Um, let's get this angle here. There we go. Could be a younger hen or it could be one of my smaller hens. So I don't know if you can see the size difference there. Now let's go even smaller yet. That is either a pullet egg or maybe like a two-year-old egg, I would guess. That's just my guessing. And then even smaller yet, the size of a big duck egg, this one is definitely from a pullet. So, I mean, think about, think about the size variables of the amount of room that's able to grow for those goslings. And there's quite a significant difference there as far as how much room they can grow. Now, I've got one little itty bitty teeny one in here that I don't even know. This is the one that I'm kind of questioning whether it'll do anything, whether it'll actually hatch or not. This one actually had a little bit of a blood on it, but where's that? That gosling right there, right there is going to be so much smaller if there was anything in those two. Um, I've seen them just about the size of a duck egg. Um, I've seen like large chicken egg. But I, I put everything in my incubator and give it a chance to hatch. Um, so let's go another tip and trick here. Okay, these things here. There it is. Sorry, this mister thing works phenomenally. I'm going to point you to the light because I want to show you guys if you've never seen how this works. There. See how it just kind of shoots out that fine mist? I used to use a spray bottle. And then I went to a hair salon and she used one of these. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I need one for the eggs. 
and I use distilled water because I do have some water softened or softened water or hard, hard, hard well water. Um, and I keep it right in my incubator. Um, so I don't know at this particular moment what else to really kind of go over. I'm getting ready to go out to the living room. I gotta check my fire. Cannot seem to get it warm enough in here this today. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, well, I'll continue doing this weekly until these guys hatch. Um, I got like four more eggs down in the basement. I may, I may not put those in the incubator. I don't know yet. I haven't really decided. Um, I think they've pretty much stopped since we got like bitterly cold. Right now I'm just trying to break room, break one from being broody. Uh, my queen bee is quite upset with me. So, uh, does anybody do not laugh at my rabbit or earless rabbit thing? That's something that my mom made the vacuum for the night. It freaks a lot of people out. If you see that back there, on back there behind me. Um, hi, Serena. Hi, Jerry. Um, I'm just kind of wrapping things up, but. Does anybody that's been on here have any questions about anything or would like me to touch on anything else specifically? Um, like I said, there's a lot and lot of videos from last week or last year. I think I've done, now done live videos two years in a row. So there's quite a bit on there. There's a bunch of different questions. Um, Hi, Jigsaw. Um, if you guys have any, you know, suggestions as to what you'd like, you, what you would like to see, um, let me know. Uh, like I said, we'll be doing this again next week. I usually do them in the evenings, on the weekends, um, usually Sundays because that's when I set in candle typically. Um, you're welcome, Jerry. And, um, so we'll be back next week. Stay tuned, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.